I really need to put the Chevelle on the lift that the 69 Trans Am project is on. But I can't stop working on it either. I wish somebody made some tall jack stands with wheels. Then I could work on both projects. I think I have an answer for that. My solution is four of these 1,250 pound swivel toolbox casters for a total working weight of 5,000 pounds. These will be attached to some extension tubing and then bolted to the frame of the 69. This will keep it at a much taller working height and make it totally mobile. My goal is to keep the car about this high. I'm going to use 3 16 thick square tubing for this project. 2.5 inch square for the front and 2 by 3 for the rear. Determine the length of the extension tube and the size of the caster mounting pads. I'm making my extension tubing 14 and a half inches and the pads are 3 16 inch flat plate that I cut to 4 inch by 4 and a half inches. The caster wheels are a little over 7 inches tall, so that puts the car up about 22 inches high. Center punch and drill mounting holes in the caster plates. I'm using 3 8 bolts. In preparation for welding, it definitely helps to grind the mill scale off, especially on hot rolled plate and tubing like this. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. So welding the caster mounting plates to the extension tube, I auto set my Multimatic 220 ACDC for 3 16 Now I'm not welding all the way around the tube. I'm only putting about an inch and a half to two inch weld on each side. That should be plenty for this application. I'm using 030 size Hobart ER70S6 wire. and just regular 7525 argon CO2 gas. Okay, in trying to figure out how I want to mount this to the frame, I figured out that the best thing for me to do is take that same 3 16 plate that I made the mounting pads out of and make a saddle that's gonna go right around the frame rail and then I'm gonna drill a 7 16 hole through both the saddle and the frame and just run this through bolt to it. So that should easily be enough to hold this to the frame. Okay, this part of the frame isn't perfectly square. There's a transition from where the frame is vertical to where it transitions to wider and horizontal. So I'm gonna to have to cut my mounting plate a little at an angle on one side. Okay, I tack the plates up into position on the frame. Now let's just remove it and finish welding it. The radius of the frame here is actually quite large, so if I wanted to, I could just put my weld beads on the inside of the saddle and it shouldn't interfere with the frame at all. Remember, keep grinding off your mill scale. Okay, now 
now is drill our 716 hole through the saddle and the frame. All right, I got my saddle up into position again, and I've got my holes marked where I need to drill my 716 hole, but I'm running a small pilot drill bit first, and then I'll take it all apart and drill my 716 hole. I'm stepping my holes up three steps before I get right all the way up to 7 sixteens. Okay, let's check this out. I think that's gonna work good. I'll finish drilling the other side and work on the back ones. So the frame mounts for the rear are gonna have to be different. The back frame isn't nearly as wide or thick as the front, which is why I'm using this two by three square tubing. So this is what I'm gonna have to do. Check it out. All right, so you can see that the rear frame is much narrower than the front. So what I'm gonna end up doing is making my own angle piece that will fit around this and attach through an existing hole that already has a nut fastener in it. And then we'll drill a hole in the side and insert one of these rev nuts that will secure that plate to this frame. And I know what you're thinking is why not just use angle iron? Well, angle iron has a wider radius and this frame has a nice tight bend to it. So the angle iron won't sit nice and flat to the side of the bottom. It's gonna end up rocking on this corner bend. So that's really not gonna be an option. So we're basically just gonna use that same 3 16 plate that we made the front stuff out of. Okay, I plan to TIG weld these corners instead of MIG weld them. Could you MIG weld them? Sure. I don't think that'd be a problem at all. I'm more of a TIG guy. I got my Multimatic 220 ACDC set for DC TIG steel. And it's auto set for 3 16 Although I did fine tune it up a little bit higher, which I'm managing with the foot pedal. Wonderful. I'll just leave that sit there in the fixture for a little bit and that'll help uh, keep it from warping. Okay, this next part for me is kind of critical and kind of not. The critical part is I need to locate this hole exactly because it has one of those frame clip nuts in it. So what I did was I marked halfway through the hole on the front side halfway through the hole on the side, and I transferred those marks to my piece, and the intersect point is gonna be where I'm gonna drill my hole. Now the side hole isn't that critical, and I can make it anywhere. I'm gonna make mine about an inch and a quarter from the top, and an inch and three quarters from the back. I'm gonna drill that with an eighth inch pilot hole through the side of my plate and through the frame. That is gonna be the location for my riv nut.
All right, now just paint it your favorite color, as long as it's Miller Blue. That ain't going anywhere. Time to assemble these things and bolt them in the car. Now this same concept will work with many different types of vehicles. Really the only difference is, is how are you going to mount it to the frame. Plenty of room to get the other car in. And still at a good working height. 